In this lecture I want to go through a quick example of how to use interaction diagrams to design a column subject to axial and bending. So say you have a one story frame like the one I'm showing here and it's subject to a vertical load and let's say that load has already been combined as one of the load combinations and you've got the ultimate load, the critical load due to um, live and dead loads. That load creates uh, axial forces, shear forces and moments along the length of the various elements. Here on the thin black line I'm showing the deflected shape you should always get in the habit of drawing the deflected shape of a structure whenever you can just so that you understand the behavior a little better. So I'm highlighting it here in yellow so you have a sense of how the structure behaves. This is the moment diagram here shown in red and at a critical section shown here as a red section I'm showing the applied moment and axial loads. Now we want to design this column to be able to resist these forces. Uh, we could also have other forces acting on the frame like a lateral load due to seismic or wind loads and that frame has to resist another set of moments and axial forces. So eventually all of these forces and moments get combined in various load combinations and uh, obviously the, the axial force combined separately, the moment combined separately and at the end you're going to reach something like this, right? You have um, an ultimate sh axial force acting on the column and an ultimate bending moment acting on that column. From those you can compute an eccentricity m divided by p. In this case that eccentricity is 8 inches where the axial load is 900 kips and the moment is 600 kip feet. We're going to start with a preliminary sizing of the column, 24 inches by 24 inches. This gives us um, two of the dimensions we need. The other dimension that we need is the distance from the rebar to the edge of the column. In this case, we are selecting two inches and that results in a value of gamma of 0.83. Gamma being the distance between the rebar divided by the total size of the column. So it, it would be that distance in this case is 20 inches divided by the total size of the column which is 24 inches. In this case we're going to use 4000 psi concrete and 60,000 psi yield stress for the reinforcement. With this information we can enter a standardized interaction diagram. In this case, as we have mentioned, for 4,000 psi concrete and 60,000 psi yield stress of steel. This diagram has a gamma of 0.75. Our actual value of gamma is 0.83. So we want to enter into a diagram with a gamma that is equal or lower than the gamma that we actually have in our column because that's conservative. As you can see here, the diagram works with two different values. One for the normalized bending stress and one for the normalized axial stress. So if we take P, 
u divided by bh we obtain point 1.56 and that's the number that is shown here in the vertical axis with the red dot approximately and then if we divide mu divided by bh squared we get point 0.52 and that's the dot that's shown in the horizontal axis we connect those two and we find the coordinate on the graph and then we try to find a value of rho g meaning total reinforcement ratio such that the curve has that point inside of it so in this case we could use rho g of 0 0.03 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 clearly we don't want to use a rho g that is larger than what we need strictly so in this case we decide for rho g of 0.03 and that is the smallest value that covers the point in our case so with a rho of 0.03 we multiply that rho by the area of the column and we get a total reinforcement area of 17.28 that reinforcement, as you can see here, is concentrated on the two edges of the column, the two faces, right, of the cross section. This is going to be this reinforcement right here and this reinforcement right here. If we use number 11 rebar that has an area of 1.56 inches square, that gives us 11.07 .07 rebar we have to round up so that comes out to 12 number 11 so we put 6 number 11 on one face 6 number 11 on the opposite face and then we're going to distribute two rows of number 11s just to have a reinforcement around the perimeter of the column and, and this column should be enough with this amount of reinforcement to resist these loads that um, were imposed on the column in terms of axial load and moment. Basically this is how you design a column if you have a normalized interaction diagram.